Hey, welcome back to Modern Homestead, Alaska. We just got back from a huge Costco haul and I am going to do something with all this meat and organize our deep freeze. If that is something you're interested in, stick around for a little bit. Welcome to our blog. If you're new around here, we're the Milnes family. We just moved to Alaska in July. We're building a modern homestead outside of Wasilla, Alaska. That's my awesome husband, Aaron. I am Jessica, a stay-at-home wife and mom, and our second son, Caleb, decided to come with us, along with our daughter, Cody Ann, and the youngest of our family, Wyatt. We brought our two dogs, Tipper and Daisy, and got a new addition, the Alaska dog, Roberto. Okay, so as part of the pantry series, we are going to work on filling the deep freeze with meat. Um, obviously, this is not enough meat to fill the deep freeze. We brought an empty deep freeze from Arizona to Alaska. There's no way of keeping things frozen in that long of a trip. So we're actually having to start from scratch. We have a couple of little things in the freezer right now, but this is our first bulk amount of meat that we're going to put into that deep freeze. I'm going to show you how we break things apart and then how I organize our deep freeze just starting out from scratch. So if this is your first time trying to fill a deep freeze, you're wondering what to do with these big cuts of meat and so you kind of shied away from buying those, there are going to be some really good tips and tricks in here for you to stockpile meat at the cheapest price you can get it and have really good food at the end of the day. So let's get into the meat. The first meat, because I only have two packages and it's right here on top that I'm gonna work with is the ground beef. I'm going to divide the ground beef out. I'm going to weigh it. Then I'm going to label it. I'm gonna wrap it with parchment paper and then with foil and get that ready for the deep freeze. So let's take a look at how you should do that. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do when you get a really big package of ground beef like this is measure it out for what size your family eats per meal. So there's five of us, but I have athletic children that are playing sports and they're all in high school or above. So everyone eats a little bit more than maybe toddlers. So I package my ground beef in two pound packages. So on this scale, I just take a piece of parchment so that the bowl that's on my scale can be kept clean. And then I read the package. It's bleeding, but this one, uh, net weight is 6.9 pounds, so seven pounds. So, I'll probably go closer to like a pound and a half, pound and three quarters, but I will try and get three or four meals out of each one of these packages. So. Okay, now that I have them divided, there's eight of them. I pulled out eight pieces of foil and I'm going to roll this in the parchment and then in the foil, I'm gonna label each one of them and then get them in a box ready to go down into the deep freeze. Let's get that.
Okay, for the label, I'm gonna do HB. It's the only thing I label like that with the month and the year. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna break apart is this ham. Ham is not something that we would necessarily, we don't do like a Sunday ham. So I actually break the ham apart before I freeze it. I use the bone for broth, and then I use several big chunks of the ham uh, throughout the weeks or month or whatever to make like soups or stews or split pea or something like that. And we wanna use it, and then we also use the ham for ham and cheese sandwiches, all sorts of different things. But I don't almost ever heat up like the whole ham at one time. So even though I buy these, I do break them apart. I don't use that honey glaze at all, so I used to save it thinking I would need it later. And I never use it, so they just would collect in my pantry, and now I realize I don't use them. Okay, the ham bone and the soup parts will just go in a Ziploc that I've labeled ham bone, but these kind of just little random chunks go in there to make a perfect broth. Okay, this ham is great for sandwiches or breakfast or whatever. I have three pieces of parchment. I'm gonna package it and I've already pre-done the Ziplocs to say ham the month and the year. So the next thing we have to prep, and we're almost done, is the pork loins. I have three of them. So if you watch the full Costco video, if not, I'll link it in the description box. But we compared the prices between pork chops and pork loin when we were in Costco, and oftentimes you're gonna pay a dollar more per pound for a pork chop than you are for the loin. Whereas I can buy this whole loin and each third of it gives us two or more meals depending on how you cook it and we make all sorts of stuff out of this 
or we can slice this into pork chops and grill or smoke them ourselves. So I am going to prep this by opening it over the sink because there's a bunch of juice in here that goes everywhere. Then I'm gonna cut it into thirds, roll it in foil, get them labeled, and these are gonna be ready for the freezer. Stay tuned all the way to the end if you wanna see one of the quick and easy crock pot meals I make with this pork loin for my family. Almost no effort goes into it and it produces an amazing meal. I included that as bonus feature at the end of this video. Okay, I adjusted things a little bit. Every ounce of my kitchen covered with food right now. show you what else is in the boxes and what we are going to do with these things for the freezer. So this turkey breast I'm going to pull out. It has a use or freeze by date which is two months away. So I don't need to deal with that today. And then let's see. The ham that's under here for sell by 6322 so I don't need to deal with that so these chickens are still frozen and so we want to do that there's two per bag but I can put all of these in the freezer that way this is that huge um, prime beef so it's a whole beef brisket so we're going to put it in the freezer just like this and then when we smoke this, we will then divide the meat that's been smoked out and freeze that separately. Instead of trying to divide this now, we'll divide it when we're done cooking this meat. Okay, next is we have these pork shoulder butts. We have two of these guys. And what we're gonna do is the same thing. We're gonna freeze them. There's actually two in this package. This will make tons of meals for us as well. Once we smoke this pork butt, we will put it in separate packages and then freeze those packages and have meat that's prepped and ready to eat. So next we have some chicken breast. I'm actually gonna use the scissors to take apart these packages instead of trying to do it after they're frozen. And then the bacon. We just put those whole slabs in, and then when we make bacon, actually, hold on. Okay, I'm back. So what we do with the bacon is, this has been going for a couple of days. This is a third of it. So we divide it into three, put in these two gallon Ziploc bags, and refrigerate it for about seven days, and then we smoke our own bacon. So when we run out of this bacon that we're about to smoke, we'll go and get another slab, make another three big things of bacon, and so on the process continues. But the way that it's packaged is perfect for the freezer, so we're gonna put it in there whole and freeze it until we're ready to start making bacon again. Okay, we have a couple other things to go in our deep freeze, like butter and cheese and milk and some other stuff, but right now I'm gonna get them to carry this down, and I'm gonna show you how I organize my chest deep freeze. Let's go do that. 
Okay, let me just pause for a second before we load this deep freeze and ask you something. If you are enjoying this video or you're curious what else we have going on on the homestead and you wanna follow along as we literally stock this homestead from nothing to fully stocked, now would be a good time to hit that subscribe button, ring the bell for notifications, and you won't miss anything we're doing here on the homestead. Let's roll back into the video. Okay, we're down in the basement where my deep freeze is, and I'm gonna show you my boys after we got home from Costco, went ahead and threw a couple of things in here just to keep it cold while I worked on the meat. All that milk is from today, all this butter, and then a few of these pork loins are from today as well, but this is pretty much what's in the freezer. I'm gonna go find my black crates like this. There are different colors, but like that crate that's down there and start getting this organized. Okay, so I found a couple of totes right here. Um, this is everything, well, that goes to the pantry, but this is everything I need to get into the freezer. Let's see if I can, kind of pull stuff out and then organize by tank. These are all already pork loin, so I'm just going to move the older ones over here and put the new ones from today at the bottom. ground beef. Here's the ground beef. All right, in this box, ridiculous. We do have some tortillas. These I think will go upstairs. And a ton of popsicles. So these are things we will wait. And then normally I don't do freezer meals, but um, recently I made a huge pasta and I had so much of it left over that I was able to do a freezer meal. So we want that towards the top where we can get to it quickly. Okay, let's see. We already have milk down here. So you're not going to believe what I just found. I'll show you in a second. <laughs> So, when I need milk at Costco, most of the time I put one in the fridge and then pop one in the freezer. Unless we're going through a lot of it and then I'll just put both of them in the fridge and not freeze any. But I have three gallons of milk upstairs right now. So we froze the four that we got today, just in case. So I would probably only put one more in this deep freeze just to even it out. And then I wouldn't do any more frozen milk. It just takes up too much space. Let me work on the whole chickens. So I have six chickens at the bottom, seven whole chickens in the top one, and then I'm gonna put the chicken breast on here so all like items together. Okay, so. All right, we have our chicken situated and what this chicken is, if we can fit it in or near here, or put it with already prepared things is the rotisserie chickens from Costco. I just um, shred them and pull them apart and then make some broth out of them. And this makes for super quick dinners where I can pull one of these out. I can make some chicken pot pie or some chicken fettuccine or any of those different things. So this is just some frozen Costco um, shredded chicken that was the rotisserie chicken. So. I'll leave that for now right by the chicken and figure out what I want to do with it. Let's move on to the next thing. 
Oh, remember I told you I would tell you what I found over here? I found a whole box of pork loin. So what had happened is recently after we moved here, Costco put a buy one, get one free on the pork loins and I stocked up. We've been eating them, but I didn't realize I still had so many left. So I'm going to move the pork loins here into that box, bringing this up. Okay, my battery died, but I am back and I didn't move on without you. So this is hamburger. So we need the, our ham, sorry. But this is ham bone. So another whole ham in the bone, just like I did today. And then these are all pork loin. So somehow I'm gonna try and get all the pork loin right here in this section. The butter is taking up too much space here. So in that little space next to the box, I'm just gonna stack butter right down in there. <laughs> You're not gonna believe this, but look, the, if you can see, one, two, three, four, so six of these butters fit exactly next to this box. Then these, put a couple of here with the cheese. Butter, yeast, I got another yeast. I already had two blocks, but I keep plenty of that on hand. Um, and the reason I, I use sourdough, but I keep so much of that on hand is after 2020, we had a friend that her child has severe allergies and she needed yeast so bad. Like people were having to like mail it to New Mexico for her to have it in order to make food for her little kids. So I get a extra pack of yeast every couple of months or so. And then I have an open one upstairs that I am working my way through, but I make yeast bread probably twice a week something like that. So I do actually end up going through a lot of yeast. Okay, so I slid this over here and I noticed that underneath I have quite a bit of extra space. So I'm gonna try and put either the bacon or the pork butt, something underneath this that is easy to grab out and move if I need to get to the milk. All of that fits, it's not even touching each other, no problem. All right, so I have two more crates and only a few more things to get in here. Okay, so before I could get my canner out of the trailer and actually can the chicken broth, I still wasn't gonna let chicken bones and such go to waste. So I made a bunch of chicken broth and froze it. You just have to leave really good head space because it expands. And then you're not supposed to can with these jars after they've been frozen. And of course I would not keep the rings and lids, but if you just pull them out of the freezer and let them defrost, they do great. So I'm gonna put these on the bottom and then show you what goes on top. Okay, so I keep these three nuts in my pantry, which is walnuts, pecans, and almonds. And my pantry is stocked with them right now. So I just keep extras in the freezer because the oil in the nuts was rancid pretty quickly, I think. But I just keep one extra of each and these will fill either a half gallon or two half gallon jars for your pantry cooking. So I keep extra nuts on hand. So let's put this crate on top and fill this with hamburger. One, two, three, four, five, six, nine, ten, 
13 packs of hamburger. Okay, the last thing to go in here today is this mammoth chunk of deliciousness, this prime beef, this whole brisket. And he is just gonna lay down in the back by himself. And when Aaron's in town next time, we're gonna make us a smoked brisket. So let's take a look how the freezer came out. Okay, finally we have all of the butter here. Kind of the package things in that one freezer meal we talked about. Underneath this crate is the nuts and the chicken broth, the bone broth. And then here's our hamburger, the prime. This whole chunk here is chicken. We had, what was it, two, four, six, eight or so gallons of milk. We have our ham and our cooked chicken down there. Two pork butts, which is actually four, because there's two per package, two slabs to make bacon with. We kept our dairy together. This is some frozen cheeses. I don't actually like shredded cheese, but I end up in situations where I have it. And instead of opening more, I put them in here. And then I have them if I want to make like a lasagna or baked pasta or something to give away. And I have those extra cheeses. And then there are some other cheeses that I had opened and they were on the verge of going south. So they got frozen. They will need to be grated after I defrost them in order to cook with them. However, I would rather have them grated and melted into a cream sauce than go bad and be wasted. So that's why they're in the freezer. We have our yeast. And we have an obscene amount of pork loins in the freezer right now. So I will continue to add to this. We plan on getting some stand-up freezers because we have fish upstairs in that freezer that we caught this summer, a bunch of salmon and some other things. So we're looking to do some stand-up freezers. And as that happens and goes along, if you're subscribed, you won't miss that. And we will show you as we continue to stock this homestead for the first time. As we've approached the end of this video, I wanna wish you well. I wanna tell you to have a beautiful, blessed week. And I hope that you stick around for a little bit. We have so much more to learn and grow and do together. I will see you in next video. All right, bonus, here you go. I thought after I put this in here that, you know what, it's not just good enough that I show you how to stock a freezer. I need to show you what to do with some of the things in your freezer. So here's your bonus footage. Here's one of those pork loins, a third of it. I topped it with a little rancher steak rub, some red pepper flakes, and some barbecue sauce that I had gotten from the haul of the girls um, team Costco video. So anyway, I put that in the crock pot on high. I'm going to leave this on the countertop. When it's nice and cooked, I'm going to shred it up and I'll bring you back for that. Okay, I just dropped my son off at baseball practice and I had this on high for like four hours and then I turned it down to low. You can cook it on high and then shred it or you can cook it on low. It doesn't actually really matter. It's actually really forgiving. So now, it is just done, and look at that. Oh, well hang on, what are y'all doing? Look at that, it's just shredding apart. So because I use this liner so I don't have to clean it, I'm gonna move it to a bowl. And by clean it, I mean like cooked on stuff. And then let's shred this up. I spit that all over my wall, too many Christmas. All right, so back into the bowl, into the crock pot, I mean, and then just leave it on low and your family eats whenever they are ready. 
And then we just put a little more barbecue sauce and some pickles and onions. And this will either go on top of rice, which is one of my son's favorite ways, or my husband got these potato buns at Costco the last time we were there. I just popped them in the freezer. So I grabbed them out. By the time my son gets home from baseball practice, those will be defrosted and we'll have sandwiches tonight. And then whatever's left over, we will put on rice and make rice bowls out of it tomorrow. So this will serve two plus meals for four people. And so pretty good. I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you for staying all the way to the end. I hope to share with you some more things that we can do with that meat we stocked up in the freezer. And have a blessed week. See you in the next video.